Hey everyone, Navik here with what is hopefully going to be the first of a long-running part of Navik's comic reviews, and that's talking about the new Mecha Manga series, Hero Organization. And this is a new series that just released in Shonen Jump, and yeah, you don't really see a lot of Mecha Manga being produced in Shonen Jump. It's usually stuff like Shonen Captain or something like that. But yeah, this is a series that I was really interested into. It was really interesting as soon as I saw the promotional artwork for it. Right, and, right, and it's called Hero Organization. The story is by Kei Sakawa, and the art is by Akira Takahashi, which I'll fully admit, I have never read anything that these guys have made before, but I kind of wanted to see it because this first chapter really impressed me. Especially because, as yeah, this series gives major My Hero Academia vibes, which love My Hero, or like the fact that I'm, I mean, the fact that I'm writing an ongoing My Hero Academia fan fiction probably should tell you. And of course, the, or it's a, or it's that vibe with Mecha is a soft sell for me because, yeah, as you could probably tell by my review channel and just me in general, well, I'm a massive Mecha fan. And so, yeah, what exactly is Hero Organization in about? Well, in the far future, after, or due to climate change or population resource depletion, and humankind basically moved out to the stars. Ours. And, however, unfortunately, while during their their celestial expansion they came across mysterious creatures called the star beast and yeah if you can't tell oh, for early on the art and the creature and mech and character and art design I'm, they're all just top notch in this book i love how everything looks looks the mecha uh really stand out and are unique they they're not exactly like like straight up military i mean they are military mecha but they uh, but they stand out out compared to like hard sci-fi mech you see like out of Gundam or Votoms. Um, so my one of my buddies actually described them as kind of looking like something out of the big O, which yeah, I can kind of see with the elongated necks and the lining mm. and all that. And the mech in the series are called Aegis. They base humanity basically created them to fight against the Star Beast. East, which and Aegis uh, as of course you can see stands for Armor for Intergalactic Guardian and Interstellar Survival. Love when they have fun acronyms like this. And yeah, the chapter st or starts with Arts right, so the bow we actually see is kind of a VR thing, thing being won in record time by this kid named Leonidas Tyler, but uh, Leonidas Tyler. But despite what you would think of this being a Shonen Jump series, we don't don't actually follow Leo as a main character. Er, our main protagonist is actually his father, Ryu. And one thing that's immediately clear about Ryu is that he is a very doting father who loves, who is a proud of how, out of his son, and he's proud of the talent his young lad is showing. And that fact that that Leo seems like he's going to be on the fast track to becoming a talented mech pilot, which, yeah, the mech, the people who pilot mechs in this series, they're basically the heroes in this reality because they're the heroes protecting mankind. And, and yeah, that's a bit where the My Hero Academia of vibes start to come in. And hell, if you need more evidence of that, at, like in the first chapter of My Hero Academia, we get the phrase, not all men are created equal. So with... Ryu pointing out that yeah, yeah, people like his son are just born naturally talented and are naturally inclined to become mech pilots and heroes, while it, while average guys like Ryu, who they're they not really have any special about them, they mostly stick had to stick with blue collar jobs, which uh, which Ryu does by being well by actually building Aegis. He just and we actually see a bit more about the culture, or because yeah. The mechs are so revered, there's actually in-universe model kits. And yeah, if you can't tell, all by all of the creators know mecha and stuff, model kits are a big part of the appeal of being a mecha fan. And so yeah, seeing that just made me, me smile. Well, and yeah, we see that Leo is actually, he really admires his dad. And he picks, uh, because he, as out of all the figures... Is that he picks out? He picks the Zoo Lab, which is the mech uh, his dad builds. Builds in. You get this really cool transition between in the Zoo Lab, Zoo Lab model kit, into the actual mecha being built. Built. So yeah. yeah, Ryu of course, Orse brags about how amazing his son is to his coworkers. Coworkers, but his coworkers point out that it kind of seems like. Seems like Ryu's just trying to live vicariously through Leo. Oh, and naturally, he, he, that kind of makes him feel bad about it because he doesn't 
because his son's life was supposed to be his own. Um, but, of course, Ryu's destiny starts to change when he actually gets a call from the titular hero organization, the organization responsible for finding suitable pilot candidates and recruiting him into the Space Force. Of course, and as it turns out, out the organization wants to recruit him. And their AI programs determine that while his physical and mental capabilities are average, it, he's perfectly healthy. He and apparently health physical help is a lot of plays a major part in piloting a mech. Heck, it also helps that helps that civilian and recruits make five percent of their or mech pilot force. Of course, and that number is growing in this day and age. Anyone can become a hero. Although naturally, Ryu's hesitant because yeah, this is his dream, but that would mean he'd have to abandon his son for long stretches of time. I'm um, though the recruiter or does placate him, saying that. And that civilians are usually assigned to low risk sectors and and they do have missions that only last like a year. Here plus his son would probably be really proud of him. And for like taking up this job. Uh, and yeah, there's a bit of tension when Leo discovers is that his dad got recruited and thinks he should take it. It but of course Ryu doesn't want to do that despite the fact that it would be his dream. And yeah, after some tension at dinner, we do see he re reflect upon it and even having a flashback to his deceased East wife. When, yeah, it is kind of a cliche that she's dead. And at the time the story starts, I think this is called like Disney Mom Syndrome. Uh, but the point is showing that even and she in her deathbed knew that he would be a great father to Leo. Uh, and yeah, uh, thinking about, about all he's done, and, and and after a dream where he you know, having him and his son and being space pilots together, and there we get Ryu's main motivation. He wants to become a father that his son would be proud of having. I think so. Yeah, he decides to take the aptitude test, and here's where we actually see you know, the pilot suits for this series, which I really dig. It's not like your usual skin tight pilot suit that you would actually you would see in like most Gundam series. It's actually a bit of a jacket with padded shoulders and stuff. Uh, I dig it. It plus the helmet is kind of like this big classic sci-fi a head bubble, bubble, and yeah, again this and the series does have a unique look to it when it comes to its mech design, I because mean, yeah, it takes a bit of inspiration from a bunch of other stuff. Of in hell, we even can see that either the mechs are operated by by brainwave control, allowing the pilots to control, move it like their own bodies, kind of something like you'd see out of G Gundam, even Galleon, Pacific Rim, all those kinds of things. Things though, and so yeah, it probably also increased the danger because it's pro Ryu would probably be able to feel the mech's pain. And so yeah, we get a test score, or where we see Ryu fumble a bit because yeah, uh, he's a rookie. Okay, and okay, but here's the fun, the cool thing about the mecha in this series because yeah, they are obviously military weapons, so there's a bit of uh, real robot elements to them. But but as the recruiter basically told us that it tells us that yeah. Uh, the mech X weapons and rely on life energy that the pilots put out, which is basically just their heroic willpower. Or right, so yeah, bit of a super robot edge to them. I mean, I already and yeah, I'm a soft sell for this kind of stuff, so I enjoy it. So naturally, the Ryu who channels the power of wanting to be a good father to his son, unbase basically what motivates him over anything else, else and. That basically unleashes a big blast that destroys at least the practice drone. Um, letting Ryu pass the test with flying colors. Uh, so yeah. Uh, he's going to be going into space for about a year. Here leaving and Leo alone and with his sister's family. He but the two who make a promise that is that when Leo's older or he's going to join his father in space Ace is another mech pilot and they'll fight the Star Beast together. And yeah, I get the feeling this scene is going to be one of those scenes that we flash back too often in this series. Because again, like, and because it is a shonen series. My Hero Academia, Bleach, Dragon Ball, they all have major flashback scenes into this. And yeah, I can definitely see this being one of them. Um, so yeah, after that heartfelt goodbye, I, Ryu is sent into the, into the Mars orbital, orbital base, base for the Space Force, along with the other recruits. 
Institutes, and there, Air Introduced the mechs are going to be partnered with. And, and, and thankfully for Ryu, it's a familiar Zoo Lab model, although he knows inside and out. Uh, now the younger recruits that think it's kind of lame, but hey, Ryu's a fan of the classics. It's kind of like me. So yeah, yeah with Ryu now seeing the mech he's going to be piloting, I think, I think this is officially the start of their legend. And, and I am all for this. Or this I love of this series so far. The first chapter really impressed me, and it's just being really it's just gonna be really fun to be one of the first people in a new fandom. Um I um so that's you know why I'm making this video because I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about it on social media, uh like stuff on Red or Tumblr. Or hell, I'm pretty sure I'm one of the on, only people who have posted to the Hero Organization Reddit, which it's so yeah, I'm hoping that with my video series covering each manga, a chapter that comes out week to week on the this comic review show, I'll, I'll be I'll, I'll hopefully convince more people to read it and check it out. Uh, because, yeah, I think this could be another a classic for Shonen Jump. And hell, even if it becomes a short-lived series that only lasts for a few volumes, I'll still be here for every part of it. I'm still going to enjoy it. And, and I really encourage anyone who likes Mecha, who likes stuff, heartfelt series like My Hero Academia, Kaiju Number 8, Eight, all the Shonen greats, it's if you like classic sci-fi mecha like Gundam, or if you like more super robot stuff, of like Mazinger, or Daimos, OSG, Shinkalion, and especially Shinkalion. This does have a bit of that family element to it that Shinkalion has. As I highly recommend, and you read my hero organization. So yeah, that's all I have to say. And if you want to see me cover the series more. Or, actually, why am I saying? Of course I'm going to cover this series. But if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification button so you always know when I upload a new video. Until next time, have a great day.